What's up guys, it's Punk Eye here. Thanks for joining me back on my review channel. Today we're doing Tsunami Bomb. That's right, Tsunami Bomb. They're back with a new album. It's been a while. But before we get into that, I first want to say, don't forget to add me on Instagram at this punk guy. I'll put a link somewhere right here. And also, if you like this review or like any of my other reviews, click the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. I would appreciate it. Now let's get to the review. Wow, I'm even surprised those words coming out of my mouth. The Spines That Bind is a new album by Tsunami Bomb, and it has been a long time. And this is only like their third full-length album. Um, it's been like 15 years since their last album, and with a consistent lineup change, you could probably see why. Now, this album got dropped on Alternative Tentacles with their new full-length album. Here's the cover. Here's the back. It's got a cool graphic. Punk rock and skeletons. You can never go wrong with that. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know everything about Tsunami Bomb, and I'm so well-versed in their discography. But I will say is when the Ultimate Escape came out back in 2002, it was a big hit. Now the band has gone through a couple lineup changes, including their singer. Whenever this happens um, and a singer leaves the band, you always have to ask yourself, is the band still the same without the original singer? I.e. is Dead Kennedy still the same band without Jello Biafra? And the answer to that is no. So the question here is, is Tsunami Bomb still Tsunami Bomb without Agent M? So let's get right into the album. Sonically, first off, it sounds amazing. It is a really, really solid mix on the album. It sounds fantastic. Way better than Ultimate Escape. I felt like Ultimate Escape was kind of missing this punch in the recording that uh, was there live, but just wasn't there in the album. Kind of sounded flat. This has a real vibrance, a really good solid mix. It's not bogged down with a lot of compression or overly produced components. It's just a really good solid mix. And one of the things that really stood out was Gabriel's drumming. Just a really good bounce and sound to the drums. And although this album isn't as fast or as aggressive as their previous endeavors, it really does do a good job balancing uh, that pop aesthetic without them becoming a pop punk band, if that makes any sense. And the keyboards take way more of a limelight in this album. So much more is I didn't even know they had keyboards in the past. I guess I have to go back and listen to their album closer. And this album still remains to manage that 90s punk sound, which a lot of bands have kind of moved on from that, but this album still kind of really holds that. Now let's get right into the tracks. And the tracks definitely have a bunch of savory, catchy, uh, sing-along tunes all throughout this album. It's full of catchy choruses and hooks that really just get stuck in your head from beginning of the album to the end of the album. There isn't one song that isn't kind of almost a sing-along. And most importantly, you can tell they put a lot of time into the melody and the structure of the songs. Most notably, Sinkhole and Last Call were the two tracks that just got ingrained into my head after the first time I heard it, for sure. And as far as the lyrical content goes, they do run into those few tropes that are kind of annoying. The ones of a, we hate men, men are bad agenda. Tracks like Dead Men Don't Call and Naysayers definitely have my eyes rolling, for sure. So Tidal is the opening track on this album, and... I didn't pick a favorite song on this album. If I were going to pick one, I would say that would be it. But this definitely gives the flavor of what Tsunami Bomb does best in this album. And it's their opening track, and it's a great way to open the album. But, for the opposite, The Spines That Bind, which is the title track of the album, is kind of no bueno for me. I'm not sure which female is doing the screaming in this album, but it's just not good. They try really hard to sound like Agent M. And once that bridge hits and they're just talking over the bass riff, it's just super corny how serious they're trying to be and how overly dramatic it is. And they do do that a couple of times throughout the album, which is kind of cringeworthy. So in conclusion, answer the question, is the band still the same without the original singer? Sure. I think this album kind of presents itself with a dilemma. An elephant in the room that I think everyone is going to ask. Why does Kate, the lead singer try to mimic and sound exactly like Agent M. Does it help or does it hinder the band? And to me, I think it could do both. It just depends on what you're looking for out of this band. Why are they trying to duplicate something with somebody that isn't there anymore? Dead Kennedys didn't get a replacement Jello Biafra. They just have someone that sings completely different. Now, does this mean that this is a poor man's version of what Tsunami Bomb used to be? I don't think so. I think this album is actually really strong and stands on its own. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought it was. I was more curious than interested when I first heard they were going to drop a new album. And that's not a knock on them. That was just me saying, oh, I wonder what this is going to sound like. I think there is enough creativity and passion in this album. They're not relying on their old material and just shitting out a brand new album. There is really a lot of solid work that went into this. So I'm going to go ahead and give this album a 4 out of 5 stars. And to be honest, I had a really hard time rating this album. 
a part of me wanted to really hate it and a part of me wanted to really love it. And I think the part that really wanted me to hate it was because of Tsunami Bomb, how I remember them and holding on to that nostalgia. And once you let that go, I think people will enjoy this album for what it is. Like I said, it's catchy as fuck. I can't say that enough. And when all is said and done, it is just a fun album. So that's my review, guys. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what did you guys think of this album. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you miss old Tsunami Bomb? Do you love new Tsunami Bomb? Either way, let me know, guys. And until next time, guys, I'll see you guys at a show. Hey guys, thanks for watching that review. I think that wraps it up for me for this year. I am done making reviews until next year, but I still will be coming out with some video content, probably some top 10s. So let me know what your favorite punk albums came out this year. And until then, I'll see you in another review.